uh, stoves. The cold weather, uh, we use the cold weather stove in the apartment. Okay, there's a lot of hype around. around. We use lots of stoves, uh, stoves that they claim that don't need to be primed or don't need to be pumped while they're working. Or they'll self-sustain. There is no stove that will self-sustain in the Arctic. Once the pressure starts to drop in the tank, you're going to have to pump it up again. And a Coleman stove does the same thing. I mean, you know, it's just that they don't market it like that. We absolutely use Coleman stoves. Now then, to, if you buy a Coleman stove today, and any stove, you have to realize, is it cold weather adapted? How you cold weather adapt a Coleman stove is you call Coleman in Wichita, Kansas, and say, I want your cold weather adaption kit. And they'll send you a little leather uh, gasket instead of the silicon one that goes on your pump. Okay, like they used to uh, send them, or they used to come with that little leather gasket that goes on your pump. That's what the cold weather adaption is for your stove. Okay, because <laughs> the silicon will get brittle and break, and then you don't have a pump on your stove. Okay, the only stove that I know that is self-containing or self-heating but may, will maintain its pressure is the little Spaya stove that they used to sell. That you're basically heating the gas tank with the with the stove well, as it's burning, so it's heating up the gas tank to pressurize it, right? You're basically a bomb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, it's heating this thing that's a little hot. But it works. Hey. You didn't want to, to uh, experiment with too many fuels like we did at one time, seeing if different fuels would give it more boost. Uh, when you buy a stove, they, uh, they'll lots of times tell you what the BTU output of the stove is. But what you're really looking for, and that, and, and that Ed is actually an engineer here, so he may be able to tell us a little bit better about this, but what you're actually looking for is how fast will the stove heat a, a, a liter of water to boiling at a certain temperature, okay? Yeah, and, and they may have an altitude. And then talking about altitude, something I didn't know about stoves is you'll see uh, a stove that has, uh, the burner will have, um, looks like the burner on your stove at home, little holes in it. And then there's the burner that looks like it's a, like a, just a jet, like the blowtorch, okay? They claim at altitude, the one with the blowtorch works better than the one with holes in it. So you, you may have to get a stove that, that you know, works better for, for altitude like that, for the jets or whatever. But anyway, you, the BT, there will be stoves, you will, you'll read the different BTUs of the different stoves and you'll think, okay, I'm going to buy the one that puts out the most BTU. That is not necessarily the one that, that heats your water up to the same degree as fast as they, or faster than the other one. They may heat the water up at the same rate, which means that now you've bought a stove that's less efficient in its use of fuel. Okay, so be very careful about that. Okay, if it says, you know, compare how fast it will heat, you know, a liter of water up to boiling at a certain temperature and, and pressure, okay? Um, the, the, this is some information I, I was, you know, thinking about. If we have time, we can go through a calculation of just how much, how many calories or how, how much energy it does to take to ha take ice from minus 20 degrees and have it actually boil. It's a large number of calories that it takes for every gram of water. So that's why you're spending so much of your time heating water and boil, uh, up to boil every day. Flare-ups and, and fireballs, okay? Something that will happen when you're um, uh, heating water is have you all heated water on the stove when it's this cold out? And have you been, like not put water in the, in the pot, just put a chunk of ice in there? Has anybody done that? Okay, well you want to put water in there, okay? So if, if anything else, take the water that's left in your water bottles and dump it in the pot first. There's a couple of reasons, but one of them I think is that it just warps the pot if you just got a chunk of ice in there. And it's heating one part and it's cold on another part. So you get your pot warped. But another thing is that I've noticed this several times is if there is not water in there to take the heat up, that, that um, Somehow, the pot, you know, keeps cold in an area, and not all the fuel at that at real cold temperatures is is uh, burnt as it comes uh, as it comes out. Now, this is just an observation. It comes out, and actually, I have lifted a pot up 
and it will have fuel condensed on the bottom. Okay, has anybody ever seen that? Okay, it's got fuel to hit in this cold finger of, of this cold pot. It's got this block of ice in it. Fuel is not burned, and as it comes up, it condenses on the bottom of the pot. Okay, but it doesn't stay there long. <laughs> because it gets to a certain temperature, and then it goes boom, like this. <laughs> I've carried more than one stove out of a tent as a fireball. <laughs> Seriously. And, it's because, and, and you'll look down, and, and, and so, and we've never had that happen when we put the water in there first. Okay, put the water in there first as a procedural thing, and then you can put your snow in there, but have water in the bottom of the pot. Okay? Yeah, yeah, we're at, yeah, we're already everything's happening in the tent. Yeah, yeah, these aren't little tents. This is the kitchen tent, so it's big enough for everybody to be in. Yeah, it's, and it, and we have to get out of the wind. Yeah, the wind is probably 25 miles an hour. You know, to cook out in that would just, you know, you'd be fighting. Yeah, you you wouldn't keep the stove. But, you know. Is it better to melt ice or snow? Does it really make a difference? No, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, of course, in the Arctic, the snow is going to be fresh, and if you're uh, melting ice, it may be salt. Yeah, so you may not want the ice. It may, it may be salt. Okay, on uh, sleeping systems. What do you know about wheels for NAD? <laughs> oh, those are great. The ones that you just pull the string on? Yeah, they sell heat. Yes, fantastic. You've you eaten Oh, yes. I used to love them. Yeah. You used to do I couldn't, can't get them anymore. For the company that I was getting them from, um, quit making them. Are they heavy? Well, they are heavy, but uh, as far as what we would do, often do, is we would have at least one or two of those with us at all times. We wouldn't necessarily use them, but if you ever got in a jam. But, well, one of the guys on our job, Walt had one, didn't he? Have you ever gotten a or jam and you needed to get yeah. some food in you? Yeah, somebody yeah, had one last year. Yeah. yeah. Does the military have one? Military has one. Yeah. The military people. Yeah, in the company that I was getting from, they sold them at Galleons. Yeah, that might be where he got his. I had mine yeah, for a couple of years, and I got them at Galleons, and then I tried to, I think I have, you can go online now and get there. It made it hot. It was oh, hot. Oh, it was hot. It was incre it's incredible. And, and you, you know, uh, when you need food and you need it now, like if somebody got injured or starting to go into shock and stuff or something, or you got somebody that's going into hypothermia and you got to get them some food now, those things are great. How do you keep Heat thing works. I don't know if the reaction is in the food. No, 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 no. It's, no. it's it, it's like a thermite reaction. I think it has a like some iron, like those uh, things that get hot when you. The gel pads. Yeah, those pads. Yeah. What are yeah. they called? What are the meals called? What was he calling them? Those are the term MRE. That's an old term. Yeah. MREs. Meals ready to eat. Right. Yeah. But though, but uh, if you can get those, those are good to have and then great backups. In case you couldn't get your stove lit, uh, a lot of times you're just, you know, you're uh, out there depending upon uh, something to work that may not work, okay? Uh, you got to get the ice down in your pumping mechanism or get a block of ice inside your, the uh, two feet of your stove with your piece of ice in there, or, you know, it's always good to have a backup. I hear the new ones are better than the old ones. Well, the, the ones I had were, I had chili, turkey chili, and I thought it was just as good as going to any chili place that's you know, it was really good. You just use standard home and fuel? Yeah. Yeah, standard home and fuel. After experimenting for years with variety, why well, did you settle on standard home and fuel? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't tell you what I would use. <laughs> no, uh, actually, since I am a chemist and have uh, uh, access to different fuels, we did use, when it would get really cold, uh, uh, lower uh, molecular weight uh, fuels like pentanes, skelly beans, stuff like that. And we thought it probably lit a little bit better. But, uh, you know, with the white gas, you're getting essentially, you know, more white. Certainly. So you think you can do wrong there, like if you have an old bottle of fuel, you say, for your last trip, and it maybe it's been exposed to moisture in the air. Is that, you know, I, to watch out for? I have never experienced that, Ed, but I think that the literature, or the lore is that the stuff goes Whatever stale is, does it oxidize slowly over time or something that makes some gunk, which could gunk up your stove. I know that if you know in your stove 
for example, in your stove, if you just leave the fuel and let it evaporate, it goes to guard. And you have to, and, there, and you call it foaming, and they tell you how to get it out. But, uh, so, you know, it, it can evaporate and go what they call stale, but I don't know much about it. Has anybody, has, everybody's heard that term, the gasoline goes stale? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, it may be actually aromatizing or something. Doesn't make it 